This time on MySolarExperience.com, PG&E goes solar, producing its own energy from the sun. Hi, I'm J.D. Marr, and welcome to MySolarExperience.com. Now this time, we're talking about the engineering challenges Premier Power faced during the PG&E installation in San Francisco. And to help me out is Premier Power's own Don Peak, the solar guru. How did you get that title, Don? Solar guru. That happened a couple of years ago where we're trying to find a title for my new business cards. I wore many hats for Premier Power back then. And during the debate, our Vice President Miguel D'Anquin jokingly said we ought to call him the solar guru. And that stuck. This was a big job, Don. Can you tell us the most challenging aspects for the PG&E installation? Well, JD, this PG&E installation wasn't your typical photovoltaic job. It consisted of three separate system types. There's a building facade system, the rooftop system, and the ground-mounted single-axis tracking system. PG&E is promoting a new green image for their company through TV commercials and other media. PG&E felt that these different system types would display a broader view of solar and their commitment to it. So you really had to think outside of the box when offering solar solutions to PG&E, didn't you? That's right. Premier Power's sales and engineering team expanded on PG&E's vision for their solar installations. They did this by adding a lower building facade, enlarging and angling the roof mount system, and promoting the single axis trackers versus your basic carport design. What are solar trackers? There are two basic types of solar trackers, dual axis and single axis. Let's take a look at PG&E's single axis trackers. Here we see flat mounted solar modules moving with the path of the sun from east to west. These modules are driven by electric motors and positioned with electronic sensors. Dual axis trackers function the same way, but they have a second motor that follows the azimuth or angle of the sun and keeps the modules in perpendicular alignment. So what engineering efforts were needed to complete this installation? Well, PG&E's site for the solar trackers was once a wetland area. Now being mostly backfill, the city of San Francisco required Premier Power's engineering team to design and construct foundations measuring seven feet by seven feet by four feet high. Each of these foundations required a full truck of concrete to fill. We built 30 of these foundations. Great, thanks for joining us, Don. Next time on MySolarExperience.com, we'll spend more time with Don talking about the PG&E building project and its integrated solar facade. Until then, let's all continue to find a way to be part of the solar solution.